Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Verdi's Nabucco, which was shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. The conductor was Paolo Arriva Benni. The production was done by Keith Warner. The set design was done by Tilo Steffens. The costumes were made by Julia Muir. The chorus master was William Spaulding. The lights were handled by Ulrich Niepel. And the dramaturgy was handled by Jörg Königsdorf. Now, what more can I say about Verdi's Nabucco? If you've seen my review of this opera that was done at the Praha Statny Opera, then you'll realize that it's one of my most favorite Verdi operas of all time because of the very famous chorus of the Hebrew slaves, Va Pensiero, which easily brings me to tears every time I listen to it. And of course, the awesomely challenging singing of the roles of Nabucco, Abigail, and of course, Zacharia. Yes, the other roles are challenging as well, but it's a sort of thankless type of challenging, mostly in the case of Ismael, who only gets to do some ensemble singing and has that trio with Fenena and Abigail. Fenena, who only has that arietta and is mainly involved in a couple of duets and ensemble singing, and of course, the smaller roles of Anna, Abdalo, and the High Priest of Baal, who are mainly involved in a lot of ensemble singing. Nonetheless, it's a very wonderful opera, and it's also one of the operas that has put Giuseppe Verdi on the map, and has pretty much made him an Italian icon, mostly in terms of La Pensiero, aka the chorus of the Hebrew slaves, which has really cemented itself in opera history as one of the greatest choruses of all time. Well, now that that's out of the way, let's get into what I thought about the production, singers, and the conducting. Now, the production of this opera was actually kind of interesting. It's not really like your typical Nabucco production where there is like a lot of, well, hues of gold and silver and like Babylonian and Assyrian types of architecture. This type of architecture is like mainly taking place in the industrial period in which there is like this huge printing press where it prints out a lot of the texts from the Torah, which is the Jews' Bible. And there's just simply put a lot of, well, machinery in there. And what's also quite interesting is that there are like texts from the Torah that are in different languages. I can't really remember which scene, but there's like a scroll of the texts from the Torah in different languages. You get to see one in Italian, you get to see one in Greek. You don't just see the ones done in Hebrew, but also in a lot of different languages. Mainly with the Jewish scenes, you get to see them, well, the texts in Hebrew, and you see all the characters like lining up the texts on stage and sort of like as a, a, a sort of a meaning of symbolism and sort of to signify that, you see, that's how the Jews lived in the time of the 19th to 20th century. And I thought that the concept was very interesting. And what's also quite interesting was also the costumes. Now, the Jews mainly wear a lot of, like, fine clothing, simple clothing, and but they're very elegant. The women have, like, these petticoats, and usually they're like black or gray or white. Fenena's is white, and the men's basically wear like the typical Jewish, well, dresses as well. And Nabucco is mainly in black, and Abigail is in sort of like a tight-fitting outfit that also reveals some of her cleavage. And when she's crowned queen, it's like she has this gown and with like a lot of diamond studs and it just looks really gorgeous. In fact, a lot of the costumes in this opera, actually all the costumes in this opera production are just simply put gorgeous. And the production was simply put very awesome. Now what's also worth mentioning about this production is that before the opera starts, we get to see this old man clad in crimson as if though that he is God himself who is moving the plot along for the main opera. And 
Well, what more can I say about this production? I found it very interesting. It was actually really gorgeous to look at, and the costumes were equally as gorgeous as well. The singing was very fine all around. In the title role of Nabucco, we had Dalibor Yenis. Now, this is actually the third time I have seen him live on stage. And how did he fare in this very challenging Verity baritone role? Well, I have to say that he fared very decently. He had a very steady tone all around, and his acting was very good as well. However, I expect a heavier voice when someone is singing Nabucco. The ones that come to mind whenever I think of an ideal Nabucco voice, or remotely an ideal Verdi voice, who can sing these type of roles, you know, like Nabucco, Macbeth, Germain, or Simon Bocanegra, Awanasro, and many other type of these roles, would be roles like, or excuse me, singers like Gian Giacomo Guelfi, Tito Gobbi, Cornel McNeil, Cheryl Milnes, Leo Nucci, basically a lot of these dramatic big voices, but usually the one that comes to mind for me, especially when it comes to Nabucco, are mainly Cornel McNeil and Gian Giacomo Guelfi and Cheryl Milnes because they have a lot of intense energy and of course their voices are quite huge as well, especially that of Guelfi's. Now, Dalibor Yenis's voice as Nabucco is, like I said, very decent, but it's not what I'd call an ideal Nabucco voice. It has to sound rounder, richer, yet really have this magnetic stage presence. Yes, Mr. Yenis's stage presence was pretty decent at best, but not really that of imposing, and unlike the other Nabuccos of the past. But still, he managed to hold his own very well, and I definitely enjoyed seeing him on stage. And he had a very elegant, pleasant, excuse me, elegant presence as well that he added to this fatherly role. So it was very enjoyable, and he was able to make Nabucco, well, a very intriguing character, even though he needs a little bit more meat in his voice for such a role like that. But still, it was a very fun performance. It was just fine all around, and, well, he was just simply put good in this part. He was just absolutely great, and it was just a lot of fun. Not the best that I've seen, not the worst either, but he was just really good. Then we have Abigail, his supposedly elder daughter, sung by a soprano that I've heard and seen several times on YouTube, but never actually seen her live. Her name is Lyudmila Monastirska. Monastirska. Yeah, Lyudmila Monastirska. A very, very gorgeous voice and an equally powerful stage presence. I would say that she is totally on par with the likes of Gena Dimitrova, Elena Suyotis, and many, many other great dramatic sopranos of the past. In fact, I would say that she's kind of like an heiress to the late, great Gena Dimitrova, because every time I hear her sing, well, whether it's on live or on YouTube, her voice really makes me remind of Dimitrova. That timbre, that round timbre, and those piercing high notes were mainly invoking, like... Gena Dimitrova, and I mean it in the best possible way. She was definitely a joy to watch from beginning to end. Her high notes were clarion. Her stage presence was magnetic. She really got the character of Abigail, and when she sang softly, most notably in the Cavatina Anch'io Discuso un Giorno, and her death scene, she sang with such finesse, such grace, and such beauty in an otherwise killer role. She really knew where to pinpoint the lyrical moments and where to pinpoint the more dramatic moments as well. And her duet with Yenis was just awesome. And not to mention that scene where... Her Abigail was in sort of like a little bit of an affair, a love affair with a high priest 
of Baal, played by Marco Mimitsa, I thought it was just simply put fun and just simply put just awesome all around. It was just fun, really. It managed to add a little bit of a little bit of a romantic comedy in an otherwise serious opera. She made this role her own, and she was just awesome to watch. Singing the role of her quote unquote younger sister, Fenena, was none other than the fabulous contralto Ronita Miller. Now, I've seen Ronita Miller at the Deutsche Oper, and she usually specializes in a lot of the maternal roles like Mama Lucia or those big sis roles like that of Anna from Le Toyon and the granny roles of Filipievna. Hearing her sing, I mean, hearing her sing a more ingenue character or a sweeter character like Fenena, I was kind of skeptical at first because I was not so sure if she's going to scale down her grandiose style of singing that's usually associated with contraltos. And boy, was I astonished. She managed to scale down her grandiosity very well, and she was able to make Fenena a young-sounding character, and she had a very grand voice all around. She still maintained that grandness in her voice that she is just totally well-known for, and she was just awesome in this role. She managed to sing her heart out very well and very pleasingly that it was just simply put, it was just simply put, fabulous. She was definitely fabulous in this part and she had a very wonderful style of singing, especially in her small aria, O Discuso El Firmamento. She really sang her heart out beautifully in this role, and I definitely enjoyed it. Singing the role of Fenena's lover and also that of Abigail's love interest, Ismaele, was Bruno Ribeiro, a tenor that I've never heard of before, but I've heard a lot in passing. I've noticed that he's done a lot of the lyric tenor repertoire of the, well, the Bacanto composers of Donizetti, Rossini, and... Um, Bellini, Verdi, and also some Mozart, but I've never actually seen him live before. So, how did he fare as Ismaele? I thought he fared pretty well, very decently. Sure, he didn't have the spinto voice of, let's say, Franco Bonisoli, Carlo Bergonzi, Placido Domingo, Jose Carreras, Veriano Lucchetti, and many, many other spinto tenors of the past, or even that of the meat that Luciano Pavarotti was very well known for, and especially those brilliant high notes as well. Okay, so Bruno Ribeiro still had those brilliant high notes. However, I think that his voice is okay for such a thankless character, but um, like I said, he doesn't really have that much spinto in his voice. But it's a very, very decent performance. It's a very great performance. He sang his part very well. And he definitely sang his heart out in every scene that he was in. So it was a very enjoyable performance watching this wonderful tenor. This tenor that I'm really sure to see and hear more of in the near future. And it's helped by his wonderful technique. And I really enjoyed seeing seeing him sing this very thankless role. He managed to make the best of this role, all thanks to his fine technique and his equally fine voice. Singing the role of Takaria was Hans Peter König, who I saw a couple of years ago as Filippo from Verdi's Don Carlo. He sang very well. He had a very plush and very round, rich, powerful instrument backed by a very powerful stage presence. Now, sure, he doesn't really have the Italianate sound of Cesare Sieppi, Bonaldo Giotti, Francesco Alera da Tenia, and Nikolai Gyaurov, and even Yevgeny Nesterenko, but he managed to hold his own very well, helped by a very flawless technique and a very round and rich voice. And yes... 
he had a very German style of singing. It's a very pristine type of singing that he's done, and it's a very powerful one at that as well. Though I would say that at times his voice is not always well suitable to sing such Italian works. So he has been proved to really be a very versatile singer. And with his voice, it just really was powerful in its own special way. It was a round, rich instrument that I enjoy in a basso. And he also had such thrilling high notes. His Fs, F sharps, and Gs were well placed and were effortless and just thrilling all around. So it was just wonderful singing and actually a pretty, well, good technique and a great technique that Monsieur König really did. And he really sang his part very well, helped by his plush, round, dark, rich instrument that he was well known the world over. And then we get to the smaller roles of the Grand Priest or the High Priest of Baal, sung by Marco Mimitza. Very fine voice, a very fine basso voice, and a very fine stage presence as well. Abdalo, who was sung by Jörg Schirna, yet again, very fine voice. I've seen this tenor many times in several productions of the Deutsche Oper Berlin. I've seen him in Magic Flute, I've seen him in Carmen, I've seen him in a lot of productions. He still has a very fine voice and a very, very great technique. And then we have the Anna, sung by a very young soprano by the name of El Benita Caitazzi, who I have also Facebook friended with. And let me just tell you that her voice was, simply put, gorgeous. It's a very lovely, lyrical, clean-sounding instrument that she has. And yes, she's currently doing a lot of the smaller roles, but I really can't wait to see her career blossom. Yes, she's still young. She's, well, she's almost like my age, except she's like a year older than me. And I can't really wait to see where she's going to go in the future, because something tells me that she has a very bright career ahead of her. She has a very fine voice, and her acting as Anna, she was able to make Anna a very sweet and sympathetic character. So it was just simply put a gorgeous portrayal of such a thankless character. And let me just say that the singing was very great all around. Yet the standouts for me definitely have to be Lyudmila Monastir... Excuse me, I can't really seem to pronounce her name now. It's kind of difficult, so Lyudmila Monastirska as Abigaila. She was definitely the star of the evening. And then Ronita Miller as Fanena. I felt like these two women really sang their roles very well. Everybody else sang their roles wonderfully, but the two that stood out for me were definitely... Actually, the ones that stood out for me were the Abigaila, Lyudmila Monastirska, the Fenena, Ronita Miller, the Anna, El Benita Kaitazzi, the Zakaria, Hans-Peter König, and the Abdalo, Jörg Schörner, and the High Priest of Baal, Marco Mimitsa. Like I said, Dalibor Yenis's Nabucco was fine, though it kind of lacked the meat that, it kind of lacked the power and the meat that Gian Giacomo Guelfi was well known for, but he still did a very fine job. And sure, with uh, Bruno Ribeiro's Ismaele, sure, he doesn't really have the spinto tender voice of Carlo Bergonzi, but it's still a very fine portrayal all around. So it was just Really enjoyable seeing seeing such very fine singing all around. And the conducting done by Paolo Arrivabeni was just great as well. Sure, there were some entries that could have been, like, a little bit slower, like the Opro di Mie, the Cabalette of Nabucco. I thought that the beginning was a bit too fast, but 
other than that, he managed to keep the tension of this opera going and it was just enjoyable. So overall, what an evening that I had with Nabucco. It was really great seeing all these singers do their thing with such an interesting production and such great conducting by Maestro Arriva Benni. So yeah, right now this is currently their last performance of Nabucco, but I'm sure that they're gonna like repeat this performance next year. So if you haven't seen this opera yet, then I highly suggest that you go check it out. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where I review the Lida Abend with René Papa. That is if I can make it. We'll see what happens. So until then, good night everybody.